The verb taxonomy just didn't play out anymore. Why that taxonomy? Why six? How does it relate to, to different content areas? Why just focus on the uh, action? And so that started me thinking. If I were going to look at this from a curriculum point of view, and that's my background training is curriculum, not psychology. Psychology is looking at trying to describe what goes on in people's minds. Curriculum is looking at it from analyzing content and analyzing, and there's a relationship, but it's a different view of that phenomena of, of, of student learning. And so the first level seemed to be almost all of those systems have some notion of recall of information. That, 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 that uh, if we uh, are going to look at education, we want our students to be able to do things automatically. Every field is like that. Every field. And so that seemed to be a, a no-brainer. Recall of information. Remember, everything needs to happen. Okay, that took about maybe 30% of the curriculum, depending upon what curriculum you're in. The next thing was, what do we do with skill and concept? Remember in math education, they have procedural knowledge and conceptual knowledge. But as I looked at that with regards and think about it, and, and from my experience and from my research and so forth and thought about that, when you thought about level of com complexity, those seem to be somewhat similar. Because you're making, you're, you're making connections among ideas, you're linking the ideas and, and, and and that uh, you're comparing and you're con con contrasting in both of those situations. And so that with regard to the level of complexity, going back to that definition, they seem to be the same idea. So I put, that's level two, okay? And, and that level two <coughs> covered then maybe another 40% of the curriculum. Okay? So, so now we're up to about 70% of the curriculum that I can describe on content complexity uh, of assessments and standards and objectives and so forth. A big thing in mathematics education, and, and you go back to one of the previous slides, they talk about strategic uh, competence. One of the big things in, in mathematics education was this notion of non-routine problem solving. And what that means is, is that non-routine problem solving is that's where you want to, you want to, to students to be able to do something they've never seen before. You want them to be able to solve a problem you've never seen before. And so that, that didn't seem to fit under skill and concept. So clearly, you've used some of those ideas in order to do that. So that's the notion of strategic thinking. And, and, and trying to, to recall that, and by the way, I'm doing this in mathematics, which is my area, and trying to use words as a described mathematics. And so that uh, this is the reasoning, this is where uh, analysis where you break things apart and you put them back together again, uh, where, where students create things that, 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 that are new. Well, that covers about another 20% uh, of the curriculum. Well, what I did then is that I felt, hmm, this is a, this is a good, good day, and so I, I came up with <coughs> these, these definitions and wrote those definitions. And then I checked my work and I went to uh, uh, statements of, of, of standards and, and tried to see where I would fit in and, and did it, everything covered. And lo and behold, you know what happened? I saw one standard that said, we want our students to change the world. <laughs> okay, okay. We call information, no, it doesn't really quite fit under that. Uh, skill and concept, well, we would be a part of that, but let me quite fit there. Strategic thinking, well, you involve that, but there was something different about that, that that really didn't match any of these, and that's the notion of extended thinking. And this is where, this is where, <clears throat> notice how I'm constructing this. I'm trying to build and trying to, 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 to represent all the possibilities that there are. Extended thinking, uh, seem to be a notion of, of time, not just, just the, 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 the notion of, of the, the, the concepts within the language, but a notion of time. And, and you think about science. Well, you want students to be able to do an experiment. 
And so, and so, uh, and, and if they wanted to construct an experiment where they have to come up with the questions, they have to come up with the procedures, they have to do the study, they have to then report it, that's something that they're going to do over an extended period of time. Maybe two weeks, three weeks. Then people were doing projects. They were doing research projects. And then in graduate school, people were doing dissertations. And those are things that are done over an extended period of time. And so, and so this became no longer a linear system. It came more to talk about categories. Because this extended thinking, this notion of, of time being a condition, this does not mean that these are necessarily as complex. You could do like the, you could do a simple experiment that might take over time, but it might not reach the kind of complexity that you have up right here in level three. And so, and so that, that this is something that, that I find is, is hard to communicate, uh, but I think it's, I think it's a, a, an accurate representation of learning, it, is that, that it's not necessarily a linear system. And, and what I've had is, is, is I've had a lot of people use my work, primarily K-12, but they don't understand that. They say if one is good, Two is better, three is better yet, and four is the best. But, but in reality, all of these are important. They're all important. If I had an educational system I, without any recall of information, I think that would be a failed system. If I have a, a, a granddaughter that cannot recall the telephone number, that's a failed, you know, that, that's not good. And so, and so what has happened, like uh, one uh, uh, precise example was that uh, I heard that one state adopted depth and knowledge level system. I won't name this state. It's not Wisconsin. Uh, and so they adopted this uh, system and so the uh, uh, state superintendent said, we want uh, to use this in, in order to look at assessment and, and, and to be sure that we're increasing the rigor in our schools. And so, and so then they, they uh, 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 <clears throat> adopted it and, and pressure was put down on, on, on the superintendent of schools in the district. And in one district, the superintendent said uh, to all his principals, says, every day I want you to do a walk around your school. That means a walk around is, you know, where you go in and you visit every classroom. And you see what's going on in that classroom. And I want you to observe every day a level four activity the teacher is doing every day. That didn't make sense to me. Because uh, something uh, like an extended activity might be something that you would do maybe over two weeks uh, of the school year, but it's not something that you're going to do every day. What they were thinking about is this is a strictly a linear system. Level one is okay, level two is better, level three is better yet and level four is the, the best. But what I think is important of looking at these is that each one has its own value. And that's different from what we think about with regards to Bloom's taxonomy and, and other systems. So this, this is a, a revised, uh, uh, or, or how I came up with uh, my uh, depth and eyes of it. 